kind of copied a lot of what my mum did because I'd be skiving home. Mum would be making up for an excuse on the phone for the teachers for why I wasn't coming in a lot of the time. And I'd watch her and then, you know, I, I'd sort of go, oh, I see, that's how you do it. <laughs> become an actor, watching my mum a lot of the time and thinking it was okay. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, a lot of it's to do with, how, you know, watching my parents a lot of the time. I don't like saying that, but... Yeah, I mean, I'd, a lot was sort of left unsaid. A lot of things aren't right. A lot of things don't make sense, what they're telling you in television, politics, or, you know, and the newspaper, and, and the education. A lot of things aren't just straightforward as they tell you, and to see that, it's, in a sense, it's alien. It's, and to look at it in a different way and not trust it, but to use your own brain. Um, well, it was started a long time ago, I was, think it was 13, 14, um, best friend Sean at the time, um, his mum came along, saw that, um, Alison, she came along and saw that I'd done these wee paintings inside the house and I just started expressing myself, you know, I, she suddenly gave me, like, a, you know, about 30, 40 big huge sheets of paper, watercolours. At the time I didn't know what to do with paints, but I was, you know, it was amazing to suddenly see that someone took interest in what I was doing. To see that they saw something I'd done, was impressed enough to give me the equipment like that on my birthday and just a massive amount of it. And telling me to go for it. And that, that was great, you know. That that boosted me to just actually go and achieve something. It's a way of getting um, points across that um, I might not feel comfortable about because I've left them for so long and that's the way I deal with things. So this is this is kind of a, a release. It's kind of like a drug. It's really good. It's, yeah. I, all my sort of unsure writings and stuff will kind of stay there and there'll be like empty paper here so I've got like tons of random books of drawings, you know. It's random stuff. So is that what you do to fill your day? Yeah, pretty much if I get an idea. Um, a lot of the time I'll just sort of go through routine to keep me being creative. So sometimes it'll just be me doing my own thing, but sort of barging ideas. And then eventually I'll sort of, I'll just get this really good picture in my head or I'll get this really good idea and I'll have to write or draw it. Yeah, a lot of the time it's me just really fake turn out of bed, watching a movie and just conjuring an idea until it comes with all the imagery around. All those, all those holes are like burn holes. <laughs> it's eventually just torn to pieces. Mm. Aye, I've got tons of souvenirs from uh, jumble sales. We've kind of never got rid of them, so I've just kept... I, I, through the years, stuff that my and dad haven't sort of made any use of, I thought, put it in my room and just place it somewhere. Instantly, you know, it, it's kind of frequent because a lot of the time I'm, you know, I, and I get out of it when I get out of my room and I get away from it. I mean, instantly, it's it's almost like a realization of what I've just come from. I've just come from a, you know, a, a monster that's been growing and growing and growing because I've been avoiding it and it's been kind of getting stronger and stronger. You know, I'm I'm, I'm kind of it's weird because now that I, I I understand how to mess with it, 
I'm using it for creative purposes to the point where I'm kind of using myself as a puppet and I can at least, if I know that I'm, okay, I'm losing it at times, at least I know that I'm using it for something good and it helps me, it helps it not be so bad when it's, you know, a long period. I can create a character that gets it out. But that shows you, like, to the extent I have to go sometimes just to get this, you know, monster out. I have to sometimes go create a, a persona and things. My, a lot of the time I like what my subconscious would do. It would just come out with something that made sense physically with how I felt. And that character was sort of, his long gated head was, in my opinion, a sort of physical version of how I felt. You know, all these feelings trapped in, a, in his head so much that it's actually built up to this long head. And the original character, the first painting, he has a stitch along his head like it's almost exploding. He said to stitch it up. And um, you'd have the, you had the, they also had the monster character of the countryside. He was sort of, he, he kind of blended in. And that was kind of like past memories, sort of forcing him to see his, his childlike sense. And he's, he's, he's kind of like the inner child, the sort of the childhood that never left, that I kind of always wanted to kind of visit. You know, I was antisocial, I was nervous. About, I was untrustworthy but with people and they put me in a room with people who had problems that kind of made it extremely worse and they didn't think about how they could have, they didn't, they didn't put any thought into it, they just saw rooms and places, it shows you there's just no, there's a system for where it's easy for them, it's not a system, it's easier for others, it's not about you, it's about them. Um, well, this one up here, the biggest one, that's, that was sort of me in depression, sort of thinking about life and death and sort of cycles and just sort of, yeah, I was really depressed at the time. And that started off with this cardboard drawing here and I just sort of changed it later on. Just sort of took parts of it that I liked and added it to it. That's what I do a lot of the time, but most of the time it's usually quite similar to the drawing because in the drawing process, I usually get the ideas right down. Like that one there, I think I've got a painting of that somewhere, and that's up at uh, Mountain Man's house. <laughs> but I kind of changed it later on, because there's this guy, uh... <laughs> there's this guy that did a drink, like, uh, he's known for drinking Coca-Cola all the time, and I thought I had to add him to it, so. Uh, you know, it's, it's not obvious it's him, but there's a wee sort of Coca-Cola, you, you know. <laughs> it's it's probably his mama, isn't it? Oh yeah, I, I, I came up with the idea straight away when I got in, I thought I have to fill a wall. But I'm not sure if I should just keep going through all the walls, like I'm not sure. You know, I got the horrible news one day. You're going to a mental hospital and you don't have any choice. Oh, do I have any choices? Yeah, you do have a choice. You can come with, you can come with us calmly or we can stick a needle in your arse. <laughs> you know, you come dozed. So, you know, that didn't help at all. That was just a, that was a bad breakdown. They thought that breaking me down in that sense would be good, but that was, that just made me feel untrustworthy towards them. Um, you know, no security at all. That's not security, that's just, that's saying that there's something in the way. And me being, I think, 17, 16 at the time, um, you know, they didn't, obviously didn't look at my case files or anything, didn't care about where they put me, they just put me in a room, the way I see it. I, try, I kind of went in a state of shock and tried to remain calm when I got there. Um, did my usual thing, you know, I kind of, found something to relate to and I saw a marble outside the door first when I got there so I thought this is my this is my marble you can give it back to me when I get out because <laughs> I've lost my marbles so they gave that back to me when I got out I'm sure a lot of people think it's negative if I laugh at it but I, I, my personal experience I it's a system that's very kind of limited. 
yeah, in large quantities, it thinks of numbers uh, and how it can reach a, a wide group rather than looking at specific people's lives. So then they just see rules, so they don't think what is the specific way to deal with this person's life. They don't want, they don't get involved personally, and for that itself, for me, is just ridiculous. If you can't get involved personally, then you're going to fail because that person will not reach you. And that's, that's like being looked after by a robot, which is what I felt like all the time. You know, probably where a lot of my conspiracy theories, theories came from, you know, these robots looking after me. People a lot of the time wonder why instead of reaching help, the needy lock themselves up. I know why. The system is the block to keep the sheeple in the cup of the hands that holds the pyramid. Would you like to talk, they'd ask, after hauling a victim as if there exists an enemy. The system is your enemy. It disguises money as a problem solver that will take away all your worry, hold on to it, use it against them. And they may pay you, blind you, till there is no shame, but your feelings and thoughts are your strength. Question, question is, does the system have strength or do we provide, provide it to grow and give it its length? Four walls can imprison you, but mind over matter can take them out of the picture and shatter the hypnosis that we are, we are powerless. Massive flame going on. You know what? 